The Legend of Zelda series has been around for a long time, invoking mystery, lighthearted fun, and adventure in our hearts for over 30 years. One of the most beloved topics for the fans of the series is the timeline. As a hardcore Zelda fan, I remember trying to piece the puzzle together as a kid through in-game clues, official Nintendo material, and statements from the producers and game developers. And then in 2011, Nintendo released Hyrule Historia and blew our minds with a complete and official timeline, finally setting in stone where each game was placed in the timeline. Or not. Well, the Legend of Zelda timeline has gone through a lot of changes over the years, so here's the history of the Legend of Zelda's timeline at Z Hyrule Fantasy. So in order to go through the complete history of the timeline, we need to go back to the beginning. 1986. Top Gun was the biggest movie in theaters, everyone loved metal hairbands and David Bowie, and Nintendo released its first in a series of games that would grow into one of the most successful game franchises ever, The Legend of Zelda. Released on the Famicom in Japan, or in America, the Nintendo Entertainment Center. And the game was a hit. It was one of the first of its kind. So it was no surprise that it was soon followed by a direct sequel, Zelda II The Adventure of Link, featuring the same Link from the original game. But the concept of a timeline wasn't fully realized until the next game in the series was released in 1993 on the Super NES, The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. And as the name implies, it's a prequel, going back seemingly hundreds of years before the original games. And then only one year later, Link's Awakening was released. It was Zelda's first handheld title on the Game Boy, unless you count the Game & Watch, which we don't. This game seemed to be a direct sequel to A Link to the Past, featuring the same Link on a new adventure. So at this point, the timeline was pretty easy to decipher for it not coming out in a linear order. Starting out with A Link to the Past, and then its sequel, Link's Awakening, and then the original Zelda, and Zelda 2. Pretty simple, right? So far, the timeline is pretty easy to follow. But a few years later, the epic masterpiece of its time hit the shelves. Ocarina of Time. The first 3D Zelda, and what some still consider the greatest Zelda ever made. And guess what? It's another prequel. This Zelda seemed to take place during the Imprisoning War, mentioned in the backstory of A Link to the Past. Depicting the origins of Ganon, when he was Ganondorf, King of the Gerudo, before the Triforce's power transformed him into a monster. Now this is the first time the timeline gets a little messy. You could so obviously place Ocarina of Time before A Link to the Past. But apparently, in an interview with Shigeru Miyamoto, when asked about the timeline, he said, Ocarina of Time is the first story, and then the original Legend of Zelda, and then Zelda II, The Adventure of Link, and finally A Link to the Past. It's not very clear where Link's Awakening fits in, it could be any time after Ocarina of Time. Okay, I'm not sure why he said that, when it was pretty clear what order they came in. The whole story of Link to the Past implies it's a prequel, and it even states in the description on the back of the box that this Link and Zelda are the predecessors to the original games. Way to make it confusing before it got confusing, Miyamoto. But anyway, moving forward. The next Zelda game Nintendo released was Majora's Mask, a sequel to Ocarina of Time. Taking place after Link defeats Ganon and Zelda sends Link back to relive his childhood. So at this point in the timeline, it looked like this. It's funny how the newest games are actually the oldest games in the timeline. But even though the timeline wasn't linear, it wasn't too hard to piece together yet. But then, Nintendo teamed up with Capcom and released two new handheld titles for the Game Boy Color, The Oracle of Ages and The Oracle of Seasons. Both released at the same time in 2001, these pair of games take place one after the other, depending on which order you play them. 
And though it seemed likely that you could link these two games to A Link to the Past or Link's Awakening due to the similarities in the graphics and the top-down perspective, but there was no in-story connections or official materials that would connect them to those games. And not too long after on the Game Boy Advance, A Link to the Passport came out with a multiplayer game attached called Four Swords. So this is the point where the timeline couldn't be deciphered definitively anymore. Fans started making all kinds of different theories, connecting games from clues from all the different games, or placing these new handheld titles separate from the mainstream games. Then Nintendo released their next story in the saga, and threw all their fans for a loop. The Wind Waker. The Wind Waker told a backstory of how after the Hero of Time, the adult Link from Ocarina of Time beat Ganon and sealed him away. But years later, Ganon returned to wreak havoc on Hyrule, and since Princess Zelda sent Link back in time to relive his childhood, there was no hero to stop him. So the people of Hyrule prayed to their gods for help, and they intervened by telling the people to settle on the mountaintops and proceeded to flood the land of Hyrule, leaving it buried deep beneath the sea. So it's no secret now that the event of sending Link back in time at the end of Ocarina of Time split the timeline. But back then there was no official timeline. And though many theorists did piece that together, this is where fan theories were all over the place. Some fans believed in a linear timeline, and some believed in a split timeline. But after Wind Waker, there was no consistent believed timeline. And as time went on, and more games were released, the theories just got more and more insane and differed greatly. The timeline was in a state of chaos. Because of how crazy it was, it became more popular than ever. And it remained that way until 2011. On the 25th anniversary of the Zelda series, Nintendo released The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword on the Wii, along with a book called Hyrule Historia. Hyrule Historia was a collector's book that contained information about the game's stories and characters that was previously unavailable or non-existent. It also held rare or never before seen official art, and after years of speculation from the fans, finally, an official Legend of Zelda timeline. Though it wasn't what most fans expected, it's true that a lot of fans insisted that there was a split timeline after Ocarina of Time's time travel shenanigans. But what no one saw coming was a third timeline split. Yes, the official timeline states that there is a third timeline split. They have the adult timeline, where Link defeated Ganon as an adult and left to relive his childhood. And then the child timeline, where Link was sent back and the events of Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess commence. And the third timeline, Link fails to defeat Ganon in Ocarina of Time. And this didn't take too well with a lot of fans. Not only was the idea of their hero being bested by the evil demon king Ganon appalling, but they also felt it was cheap because any time a player died or got a game over, that could branch off into another timeline. But it's official, and it still stands today. And even though many were unhappy about this reveal, many cherished the story and the additional lore that came with Skyward Sword. Skyward Sword takes us way back to before Hyrule even existed and tells us the origins of the Master Sword, and births the reason why Link, Zelda, and Ganondorf seem to be in a never-ending battle across the sands of time. It tells the tale of a demon king, Demise, who tries to take over the land, snuffing out the light of anything good and consuming it with hate and fear. And the first incarnations of Link and Zelda, who go on an epic quest to power the Goddess Sword, transforming it into the Master Sword which Link uses to save the land and defeat Demise, resulting in the demon cursing the bloodline of the goddess and the spirit of the hero to forever be burdened by his hatred and malice reincarnated, stuck in a cycle of never-ending conflict and struggle for the heart of Hyrule. Now it's obvious when Nintendo started making Zelda games, they didn't have a timeline in mind. But in recent years, since Skyward Sword and Hyrule Historia, they've given it more attention due to how important it became to the fans. The next title to be released was A Link Between Worlds for the Nintendo 3DS in 2013. It was a sequel to A Link to the Past, using the same Hyrule overworld, 
though a different iteration of Link, so it was placed after the Oracle games in Link's Awakening. And not long after that, another game was added to the official timeline in 2015, Triforce Heroes. Yes, this game is canon. A weird decision by Nintendo if you ask me, but this game sits right after A Link Between Worlds in the Downfall timeline. After a long few years of delays and teasers, the next chapter of the Zelda timeline was finally released in 2017, Breath of the Wild. Zelda gamers waited in anticipation for this game since it was first announced in 2013, and dissecting the trailers and the little snippets of gameplay Nintendo would give us to hold us over. There were an overwhelming amount of theories about where the game would fit in the timeline, and naturally, we all assumed when Breath of the Wild came out, it would reveal all the answers. But lo and behold, when it was released we found, the game didn't hold any definitive answers, and neither did Nintendo officials, at least at that point in time. I remember the internet just flooding with different theories and arguments about the hypothetical placement of the game. Breath of the Wild timeline placement videos were a dime a dozen on YouTube, and the thing was, there was proof for each individual timeline split. You could find crystallized sea salt from the ancient sea, and the Korok and the Rito races had only previously existed in the adult timeline, so that made for a compelling case for the adult timeline. There were old ruins which some argued matched the castle town of Twilight Princess, the definite remains of the Arbiter's grounds. Zoras existed civilly with Hylians only in the child timeline and before the split and Princess Zelda mentioned the embers of Twilight in a memory when referencing legends of the past. And as for the downfall timeline, for one, the tone of the game, being as Hyrule seems to be in a state of decay, certain landmarks that had only been seen in its string of games like Spectacle Rock appeared, old enemies were reimagined like the Lionel and the Hinox, as well as monstrous mindless Ganon which had previously all been exclusive to the downfall timeline. But all these pieces of proof contradicted each other. Well, finally Nintendo spoke, and gave us a definite placement. Kind of. It's at the end. Of all of them. After all the fuss and brain power put into trying to piece it together in years of games being officially placed in the timeline, a lot of Zelda fans were not satisfied and didn't want to accept this answer. I like to think of it in a few different ways. Either Breath of the Wild takes place so long after the other games in the series, each event has been able to occur in all the timelines. Or, it's the inevitable outcome that's fated to happen no matter the differences in each split. Some like to think somewhere along the lines, somehow, the different branches of the timeline converged. Either way, it's the last game in the timeline until we get the sequel, which is hopefully coming sooner than later. And that about wraps it up. Oh yeah, almost forgot. Link's Awakening was remade in 2018, and for some reason, they changed its placement from after the Oracle games to before the Oracle games. But chronologically, A Link to the Past, the Oracle games, and Link's Awakening are the adventures of the same Link. And being that Link's Awakening is all a dream, I don't think it matters much when he had that dream, so nothing to fret about. Well, that's the history of The Legend of Zelda's timeline. Like and subscribe if you like this video and want more Zelda content. Thanks for watching. See ya.